Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Danny Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel about Dungeons and Dragons where we're trying to take a darker tone with everything we do here. So if you like your kind of content, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. What you do for us is amazing. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, the link is in the description. As well as a link to our good friends at Critical Failures, where we're part of a live stream game on Wednesday nights. Check us out. And with all that out of the way, we're going to talk about the Kenra. The Kenra are a very cool looking species. I'm going to read their little flavor text here to give you kind of like an idea about them. And then we're going to go into some of their abilities and I'll tell you why I think they're so awesome. Um, the Kenra of Amonkhet are tall and lean with graceful bodies and heads that strongly resemble jackals. Their snouts are long and sharp and their angular ears rise straight above their heads. Their bodies are covered in dark, sleek hair that ranges from the brown of the desert sands to ebony black. Despite their sharp teeth, they consider biting to be an uncouth and unworthy combat tactic. Nearly every Kenra is born a fraternal or identical twin, and a pair of Kenra twins forms an extremely close emotional bond unknown to most other residents of Amonkhet. The death of one twin in training or trials causes tremendous shock to the survivor, who typically grows more aggressive and foolhardy in battle. Rare Kenra who are born without twins are believed to have killed their siblings in the womb and are thus viewed as natural born initiates, sure to achieve a glorified death in the trial of zeal. Now I couldn't really find a lot about the trial of zeal. Um, for some reason I'm just not having the information or I'm not going through the right channels, but I'll get a little bit more into some of their lore and some of the awesome things about them. Um, let's just get through their features and kind of cut, put that into perspective because a lot of it's kind of tied into it. Uh, you gain a plus two to dexterity and a plus one to strength. Obviously, they're kind of combat oriented. You get that kind of feel from them. Uh, it is very, very cool. Uh, so you are inclined to those kinds of species. They tend to love hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is something that's... Um, very inherent in their lore so dexterity tends to be one of those things that would work really well for a monk uh, kenra mature quickly reaching adulthood in their early teens uh, kenra initiates are usually the youngest in a crop completing their trials by their late teens even without a violent death they rarely live past 60. for perspective humans live to about 80 years so that's 20 years kind of taken off the bat um so it does put a kind of emphasis on them reaching some sort of glory or achievement uh, and makes that more important for them than it is if someone who had more time. Uh, Kenra are usually the same size as humans, anywhere between 5 and 6 feet. Your size is medium. You have a base walking speed of 35 feet, so you are a little quicker than a normal person. You do have Kenra weapon training. You have proficiency in the Kopesh, the spear, and the javelin. Uh, understand the Kopesh is a very cool very curved sickle like blade uh it's it's very very like egyptian uh I, at least that's kind of like a strong feel i get from the kenra obviously because they look like anubis you get that i'm expecting you're supposed to get that feel you would treat a kopesh like a long sword uh as far as uh, mechanics i think there's a kopesh in curse of strahd but uh, I don't really think there's a lot of explanation for it uh but you do kind of just basically treat it like a long sword the other ability you get is Kenra Twins. If your twin is alive and you can see your twin whenever you roll a 1 on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll. There is no cap on this. Obviously, whatever that roll is, you make that next roll, and whatever that result is, you have to keep it. But if you make a roll immediate after that, you still get to use this feature again. If you were doing the... Um, like, I call them brother sisters characters, where your character is related to you, you're both Kenra's, like, like this is a very cool thing to do. That gives you that added benefit of being, like, always within your twin's uh, sight and point of view, so that way you can actually gain the most out of this is a pretty strong ability. If your twin is dead, or if you were born without a twin, you can't be frightened. That... <laughs> As someone who loves fear uh, as a status ailment, and this is my favorite status ailment in Dungeons & Dragons, I, I like that there's a lot of different fears. I like there's a lot of different riders to the fear, so they all cause different things to happen. But the fact that you're immune to fear 
and the frightened condition is something that's so cool uh, to me and so unique because there's nothing else that kind of gives you this. Uh, it's it's really quite awesome. Uh, I think very highly of what they look like and the lore behind them because they worship two gods. Uh, they worship Hypnos and Thanatos. Hypnos is a god of sleep and Thanatos is the god of death. The way they build their lives and they, they the ones that go towards combat, which is a huge amount of them, uh, and this like severe impact of what a loss does to your character, making them reckless and foolhardy and, and just battle hardened and blood crazed. It just it speaks volumes to me because when you make that super edgy backstory and I do it all the time where your whole cat family was like eliminated by some sort of threat now you're reckless now you don't care about the rules you know what I mean like you're you're out there to risk it for whatever reason you're out there maybe it's just to be able to hurt something and not have to deal with the repercussions so the best way to do that is to hurt the bad guy because less people ask questions that way it's it's so great to be anchored towards something that that really drives a mechanic behind a story for a character full disclosure none of the planescape species well there's maybe one or two that are are really really strong most of them don't really have a huge big benefit to being them it's really kind of story driven uh your reasoning for choosing them if you're going to do a brother sister uh character definitely do a kenra and definitely see what happens when one of you passes and how much that changes your character because it's not just oh man it sucks that they're gone and my my heart will be heavy for a few sessions but whatever i'll move on like now your character's different now your character will never be the same like they have severely changed what their life is like uh, and you might be speeding towards that extra violent death, but it's so reinforced with your character. Like, this is your, like, Viking. Like, this is your, like, I'm going to die in combat and I'm going to go to my heaven because that's what the real dream is. That's what glory is. This is what that species is. But again, there isn't a huge amount of stuff in there, but you do have a great opportunity to make a cool character that has... A significant tie to the world and for DMs out there that are building their own campaigns anything that ties your characters to something anything that ties your players to something is a great motivator it's a great thing to change how the story is going and it's a great opportunity to give depth and opportunity for your characters to hate the bad guys to want to achieve whatever the goal is of the campaign uh, and it's very easy to write one they kind of give it to you very easily with the Kenra with all that being said and done, there's just something great about going up to your DM and going, this is my character, I ate my twin in the womb. Like, it's just a fun thing to say. Um, obviously, Planescape is very iffy to kind of be put into campaigns. Definitely run these kind of characters and these species through with your DM first before you invest a large amount of time for a character that you can't play because that's pretty heartbreaking. Uh, I do love the Kenra. I think they're awesome. Uh, I just got to kind of find the right reason to play one or a reason to be one that's not in the desert. Um, but I, I thoroughly like their lore. I think they're cool. I think they're beautiful looking as a species. I just love that. Uh, I happen to love ancient mythology. So like, you know, when you look like a god of death, like the Egyptian gods and look like Anubis, like, like I'm right there. Um, if you've made it this far into the video, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, what you do for us is amazing. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, the link is in the description, as well as the link to our good friends at Critical Failures. Check us out Wednesday nights, and thank you for giving a spooky kid a chance.